Hi, I'm Val Hart in San Antonio, Texas, founder of Val Hart and Friends at ValHart.com. Welcome to The Real Dr. Doolittle Show, the show for animals and the people who love them. I've been called a real-life Dr. Doolittle many times in my career as an expert animal communicator, behaviorist, pet psychic, and master healer. My mission and passion is to improve the lives of animals the world over by helping humans learn how to speak their language, how to understand their viewpoints, and heal. After all, our love of animals helps us be better humans, and the more balanced and healthy we are, the more balanced and healthy they can be, too. Be sure and look for my CDs on iTunes, and to find out more about my work and to receive your free Quick Start Animal Talk course, just go to my website at valhart.com. While you're there for a limited time, you can also apply for a complimentary Happy Animal Assessment Session. And if you want to learn how to be your own Dr. Doolittle, check out the world's first complete animal communication made easy system available now on my website at valhart.com. Thank you and enjoy the show. Hi, this is Val Hart, the real Dr. Doolittle, and today I'm talking with Billy Rafferty. Billy is the owner and principal stylist at Doggy Doos. He has over 25 years experience as an award-winning pet stylist and a sanctioned grooming show judge. Billy has dedicated his life to making grooming a fun and positive experience for dogs, and he believes that grooming is more than just a show-stopping haircut. It's actually about getting dogs spotlessly clean with a gentle touch and lots of love and praise. Billy is Chicago's only master pet stylist, certified through the International Society of Canine Cosmetologists. He's a Dermatech specialist, certified master groomer, companion animal hygienist, He's designated by the United Show Managers Alliance as a sanctioned grooming show judge, and he's the recipient of numerous awards at national and state grooming competitions. And he's the preferred pet stylist for many celebrities. Billy is a highly regarded speaker, lecturer, and author of a wonderful book named Happy Dog, Caring for Your Dog's Body, Mind, and Spirit, which was featured on Oprah.com and is what we're here to talk about. Welcome, Billy. Hi, thank you for having me. I'm delighted. I want to know. Okay, starting right, start us right off. How in the world did you get involved in dog grooming? Well, it's the strangest thing, you know. Always having a love for animals at an age that I could remember and yeah. before, yeah. according to parents and grandparents. Um, very young age, started trimming my sister's stuffed animals and her derby <laughs> heads. <laughs> <laughs> this is funny. Basically started with doll heads and then moved to teddy bears with pinking shears. Oh, my God. So okay. When most most little boys were wanting to be athletes or astronauts, here Billy was reading his dog books, uh, trimming teddy bears, <laughs> but, um, you know, from the south birds of Chicago. Mm-hmm. And um, mm-hmm. that's basically how I got started, and it just never stopped. It went from there. Oh, Wow. I so, myself with animals, you know, dogs and cats and birds and, right. you know, just, just a, a genuine, just a pure love for being around animals and dogs, dogs mm. in particular. I love that. Uh, dogs in particular. So did you have a dog that was really special to you that you wound up practicing on when you were a kid? Well, unfortunately, growing up, we had um, short-haired dogs, like German short-haired pointers. And oh, yeah. We had a Great Dane and mm-hmm. nothing in particular. That's why I had to feel into my sister's room and take care of her stuffed animals because our dogs were totally hairless. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm assuming that she enjoyed your uh, your efforts on, on her anim- her uh, stuffed animal's behalf, or was she rather annoyed? She was rather annoyed, especially oh. <laughs> free teddy bear with her chatty Kathy doll oh. and no hair left on her head. So. <laughs> oh, my God. That's too funny. Oh, God, I love that. I can just see you there with your cheers. Taking taking care of them. Taking yeah. care of them, yes. Loving uh, every moment, too. Uh-huh. I bet you had a great time. I did. Oh, man. So so let's talk about grooming. So, so Billy, why is grooming our dogs important? Uh, grooming gives us a, an opportunity to not only make sure your animal's clean, your your puppy's clean, or your kitty, for that matter. Mm-hmm. Um, a, a interesting part, when I'm grooming dogs, um, I'm taking care of my clients or even my own dogs, Mm-hmm. I um, can inspect the whole body. Okay. I mean, when I'm washing dogs, I can feel for tumors. I can 
uh, spot parasites, you know, ticks, uh, fleas. Mm -hmm. um, I can inspect the ears when washing. The ears are infected, you know, mm -hmm. conjunctivitis in the eyes. I can notice any kind of anal gland or any problems in the, the, um, the genital areas, etc. or just the skin and coat. You know, you can basically get an overall view of the whole dog because right. you're washing from head to toe and you're feeling, you know, and many times I've, you know, found lumps, lumps that pop up in a matter of three, four weeks mm -hmm. that, um, you know, because they're not going to the vet every week like they are the groomer or every two weeks, mm -hmm. I'm seeing these things and I'm then directing them to go to their veterinarian for further, you know, maybe you should have this checked out. It wasn't here three weeks ago, but maybe, and you know, it turns out a great way for me, to, if, you know, to figure problems out that are going on or just starting. Um, I also think um, grooming is so important for allergies, and I just recently found out that um, after many years that I'm allergic to dogs. How ironic. <laughs> How I want it. Oh, oh, that's awful. I know. So with, with um, and I have two dogs myself. I have a Portuguese water dog and a Cocker Spaniel, which are wow. allergy, they're not allergy free, but they're much easier with the dander. And I keep my dogs washed. I usually wash and fluff them dry every week, and that helps me a great deal with my yes. allergies. Yes, uh, that would make a lot of sense, because it's, isn't the allergy about the dander? It's about the dander. It's also about the saliva and urine, but also if you have outside allergies and your dog's outside, and, of course, my dog's sleep in bed with me, mm -hmm. um, you're bringing that out, the allergens in from outside, the pollution, it sticks to the dog's hair. You know, like ourselves, we could shower every day, yeah. so it comes off our hair and everything else. But with the dog, if they're outside and they bring the allergens in the house, it'll also alleviate and help mm -hmm. The person suffering, you know, the, the owner suffering with the allergies as well. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, okay, that's a really good point. Okay, mm -hmm. so um, so there are a lot of benefits to grooming. Many, yeah. Many, yeah. Um, is it better to hire a professional groomer or try to do it yourself at home? Well, I think when it comes to actually cutting the hair, like if you had a poodle, um, I think you could probably maintain in between. Uh -huh. I think to have it professionally done to to cut the hair, I mean, it definitely takes. Um, experience and practice uh -huh. to, you know, wield a clipper or scissors. Um, but in between, I mean, we can easily bathe and brush our dogs and cut their nails in between and keep their ears clean mm -hmm. and, and make it easier for the, you know, for your, for Fido, let's say we like to call our dogs and, you know, is a general calling for Fido. We like to keep Fido cute and fluffy in between grooming. You know, I mean, it's, Mm -hmm. um, it's not always easy to bring the dog in every week or two. It's sometimes inconvenient. So if you can do some of the stuff at home, like brushing and, you know, combing out, uh, it'll help a great deal with the whole grooming process. Okay. Okay. That that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I, I'll tell you a really quick story. The last time I had my dog, Einstein, who's a not-so-miniature schnauzer. <laughs> he's, he's about 28 pounds. Um, anyway, I had had him uh, groomed by a mobile groomer uh, people that, that were coming to the house, which made it really easy. Um, anyway, when they brought him back in after they had, you know, finished with him, um, they had just destroyed his ears. <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, I mean, he had uh, massive infections in his ears from whatever they did, you know, trying to uh, clean his ears, pull, rip the hair out, all that stuff. And, you know, it took me months to get him to where I could touch his ears without him screaming. Oh. You know, so I, I, anyway, I I know it's really important to be careful of who you hire and 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 to know how to get a good groomer. You know, um, so let's talk about that. I, I'm let's just I skip a little bit. So let's talk about the type of groomer certificate uh, certifications <laughs> certifications. Uh, there are certifications, right, that exist for groomers. Yes, there are. Okay, um, so uh, do they need, do a, does a groomer need to be certified or licensed in some way? Well, unfortunately now in the United States, um, there is no regulation for dog grooming. Anybody could get a business license and hang up a shingle and call themselves but, a groomer. Wow, buy some clippers and some shampoo yeah, and set exactly. yourself up. Oh, okay. And it's, um, it's rather scary at times. I mean, I've dedicated myself to just doing the best job that I could possibly do, educating myself on proper techniques and how to handle dogs. And a lot of it comes naturally, of course, especially if you have a lot of empathy. And, you know, that has always been natural for me to 
pick up on body language of dogs and mm-hmm. make sure they're very comfortable, and that's my first priority. Ah. Um, but as far as, like, there are, there are many different certification options for groomers, and they're all voluntary. Hmm. To me, um, for a groomer to certify, get certified through an organization, it's a big step because of saying, okay, I don't have to do this, but I want my clients to know that, you know, I want to go forward and I want to be the best that, that I can be at what I'm doing. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, there's definitely higher, you know, different different organizations that have higher and, and more involved tests, but I think it's definitely a start when okay. people do volunteer to go do this certify. Okay, okay, that that makes sense. Um, so when a fur kid parent is looking for a good groomer, uh, what questions should we be asking? Well, a lot of questions. If you want to walk into a place and you take a deep breath and you smell dog, that's okay. <laughs> if you mm-hmm. go into a place and you take a deep breath and you smell feces or urine, you know, that may not be a desirable place. Uh-huh, okay. Second of all, dog people um, tend to be a little better with dogs than people, so watch the mannerism between the dog and the groomer, more so than the owner and the groomer. I'm not saying go to someone who's going to yell at you, but mm-hmm. clearly if someone's really good with your dog and your dog's happy to be there, then that that says a lot. It really does. Okay. Um you see a, a beautifully groomed dog on the street, I think it's a great idea to ask, who grooms your dog, and are you happy with them? Oh, okay, okay. Probably word of mouth is probably, I think, the best, because people will tell you. They'll be really, really happy to say, well, I've been going here for years, or they do a fantastic job, and mm-hmm. clearly you can see it yourself if you see a nicely groomed dog, and you, you ask, just ask. Mm-hmm. Okay, It's okay. always a good, sure thing. Because okay. believe me, people aren't, aren't good. If they're not happy with something, they'll let you know. You know? Yeah. Especially if, when it comes to dogs, people are, you know, they're a little more protective with their dogs. So. Mm-hmm. Yes, well, and, as we should be. <laughs> yeah, for sure. They <laughs> they're part of the family. family. They are part of the family. Oh, my God. We wouldn't take our child to a hair cutter, you know, or a stylist or something that treated him badly. Oh, you never. Know, we, not, not more than once, you know. <laughs> and, you know, the difference you know? between taking your child to a stylist or your dog is mm-hmm. your child can talk. <laughs> your dog can't. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, and, and fine, yeah, you know, yeah. Well, you know, in my world, dogs do talk. So okay, um, that in fact, a lot. I wor- I've worked a lot with uh, people who whose dogs have been, you know, terrible, terrified, you know, mm-hmm. to go to the groomer, and the the owner is like, well, what the heck happened? Why are they? Why do they shake like a leaf and and you know pee themselves? You know, every time we go to the groomer, I don't understand. Um, and we talk to the dog, and they say, well, you know, I'm being tortured here. I, this is. You know, they hurt me, they, you know, pull my hair, they, you know, <laughs> they treat me bad, you know. I'm I'm terrified to be here, and they have really good cause, and they'll tell us, you know, what happened. Right. So for all the groomers listening today, uh, your dogs actually can tell on you. <laughs> um, if we had a communicator to be their voice, because uh, they know. They know what they were experiencing. You oh, know, sure. they know what happened. They can tell you if you know how to hear them. So, um, yeah, I- I'm really glad you brought that up, too. Mm-hmm. It's, okay. You know, it's. I, I like when my clients leave my salon, they don't want to leave. They want to come back and hang uh-huh. out. And, stay uh-huh. and usually they tear right in and they're happy to see me. And, you know, it's a good feeling. It mm-hmm. really is. Yeah. It's yeah, important I love to that. me. I want to make sure that there's no reason for any animal to feel uncomfortable during the grooming process. You know, just. And like you said, you know, you sometimes you get dogs in that have come from who knows what happened to them you know it, it, right. you know they may not have the opportunity to um the owners may not have the opportunity to figure it out but you know you could see it right away you, know, you can yeah. see that they just have been mistreated or yeah. it's really sad yes it is it's heartbreaking it is sad. Uh, yes actually it is oh okay so um so i want to back you up for just a moment um Tell us about some of the celebrities' dogs that you've worked with. You're, you said you're a preferred pet stylist for many celebrities. Can you tell us some good good stories? Oh, um, sure. I um, have been taking care of Miss Winfrey's dogs, Oprah Winfrey's dogs, for the last oh, wow. 17 uh-huh. years. Oh, my God. Okay. So, That's wonderful. Um, Tamron Hall, MSNBC news anchor. She's a client. Okay. Um, celebrity Art Smith, celebrity chef Art Smith. Oh, okay. Um, a client uh, as well as um, Joan Cusack and you know several other people and 
sometimes people come and travel, you know, come in through Chicago that are in California, and they stop in and, you know, as clients. But typically right now we don't take a lot of new clients. We have a couple-year waiting list. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. It's busy, which is a good thing. Yeah, it is Especially in the economy, you know. (laughs) Yes, exactly. You you bet. Yeah, so... so, um, so the economy, the problem in the economy hasn't really hit hit you. <laughs> um, You're doing very well. I'm doing very well, but I have, you know, I we don't take new clients, and, you know, everyone pre-books for a year in advance for the most part. Mm, wow. So it's, it's I'm very lucky and fortunate. I love that. Thanks. Oh, wow, that's great. You've got a good roster of fun people. Yes. Ah, okay, <laughs> that's great. Can you tell us a, a funny story about one of their, their animals or something that's happened? Uh, something that's happened. Um, well, can we come back to that? Yeah. I have to process it first. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm thinking. I'm there. thinking. There's just so many. What would we choose? What would yeah. we talk about? Okay. So uh, so let's go back into, oh, you know what? I've got a question for you. Do you I, I know we have a lot of cat lovers in the audience. Okay. Um, do you ever groom cats? You know, I used to groom cats often, and I think probably in, it's been like 19 98 I've actually stopped grooming cats. Ah. I I personally think cats should be groomed in a grooming salon strictly for cats. Oh, uh-huh. Okay. I don't think it's a great idea to um to you know expose the poor kitty cats to the barking dogs all day long. It mm-hmm. just it just doesn't mix well. Yeah. That I, makes I sense. Remember the last cat I groomed is uh his name was Sunny. And um the owner of Sunny, you know, brought Sunny in, and uh, Sunny was this beautiful flame point Himalayan, mm. and he was going to get a bath and comb him out. And I took Sunny out of the cage, and and I remember Sunny was in his carrier, and the whole time I heard this, <laughs> and I looked up at Sunny's owner, and I said, "Does Sunny bite? Is he friendly? Does he like the grooming process?" And she waved her hand and said, "Oh, he's a gem." You'll mm-hmm. love them. <laughs> and, of course, oh. my experience with animals and reading body language and hearing it personally, yeah. I realized that Sonny wasn't, you know. So I proceeded to take him out of the ken- little berry kennel with caution, mm-hmm. put him on my table, mm-hmm. and um, to put, hold him by, not scruff him, but hold him by his neck and start combing, and he turned around and swatted at me uh-huh. and hissed. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And as it continued, the whole time he was growling. And the dogs <laughs> were barking in the salon. And, you know, poor Sonny. I mean, come up. <laughs> oh, my God. So I said to Sonny's owner, I said, could you hold him? Because the last thing I want to do is get bit. And I think you should, you know, make him feel comfortable. Yeah. And she proceeded to say, he does not bite. He's a great kitty cat. She's holding him. And I went to go brush his one paw. She's holding him. And he turns around and swats her and bites her in the finger. Uh-huh. And she was bleeding. So yeah. I then got some paper towels and some peroxide, and I said, here you go, and some cotton balls. I said, clean that off. And I said, it's going to be rough with Sonny. He doesn't like this. And she continued to say, he's not mean. It's all friendly. Oh. I'm like, okay, you hold him. Just mm-hmm. be careful. Don't get bit again. And sure enough, I went to pick up his tail to just lightly brush him, and he turned around with both claws and clamped onto her hand and bit her. Um, <laughs> I don't mean to laugh. I'm sorry. But her hand swelled up like a purse. Oh, wow. So that, needless to say, that was the end of grooming Sonny. <sighs> yeah, that's, uh, so, you know, how many times does he have to express himself before <laughs> he gets our attention? Right. Wow, poor owner, must have just been delusional. <laughs> he left thing. He doesn't usually do that. <laughs> well, has he been to a grooming salon? He, uh, he, he made his rounds. Yeah, how did he probably just didn't want to hear that. You know, he, and honestly, to be honest, if he probably were groomed in a place where there were no barking dogs, he might have been okay. I, I, I sense that he yeah. was just a little, you no, know, a little bit hesitant with the barking dogs and all the noise. Well, you know, that makes a lot of sense to me. You know, kitties are not dogs, no. and uh, they don't respond that way. So, anyway, all no. right. Well, thanks for sharing that. That's <laughs> You're you know, a lot of people are like. I don't know if I should groom the cat or not. I don't know. How, <laughs> how do you do that? I don't know. Oh God. Okay, so so let's talk more about the actual grooming process. Okay. Um, so should the price matter? What? The, I mean, you know, a lot of groomers, you know, we, they're they're all over the place. I know in our area, it ranges from about thirty five bucks up to I don't know a hundred. Mm-hmm. Uh, so um, so what's should we look at that as a as a 
you know, is that an indication of the quality, or, or what, what should we be asking for when it comes to price? Um, n- not necessarily. Um, not necessarily does that mean anything about the quality, but okay. I will say this. If you're going to go to a place, um, a salon that does it for, like, unbelievably cheap and has them in and out in an hour, hour and a half, mm-hmm. my personal experience, they're obviously cutting corners. <laughs> okay. So, And, you know, I'm on the expensive side of grooming, but I put a lot of detail work into it. You know, the, mm-hmm. every dog gets two baths. They get a conditioner. Their nails not only cut, but they're ground with a grinder, you know, a little mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Make sure you take the sharp edges off. Mm-hmm. Um, I do everything by hand. The drying's done by hand. I use a lot of scissoring. And even on house pets, you know, most of my dogs are house pets. I do some show dogs, but mm-hmm. the house pets are, you know, treated equally. So everyone's getting the whole process. I'm very consistent with my work. Mm-hmm. And um, okay. I basically um, just put a lot of detail into it. So for me to charge that, what I charge, um, that's, you know, I get... I get um, a certain amount of money, but it's for my time, and that's that's yeah. how I do my pricing. Well, and it sounds to me like you're spending a lot of time with the dogs. Oh, know? quite a bit, actually. You know, yeah. I so, mean, it, mm-hmm. it, for me, it's impossible to wash and dry a dog and get it done properly, mm-hmm. and not only get it done properly, but to keep the dog comfortable by not mm-hmm. stressing it out by rushing it through blow dryers and you know all this in an hour, hour and a half. It's just, it just doesn't. It doesn't sit with me. <laughs> right. So, so super cuts for for dogs is probably not the place you want to go. <laughs> right. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. If you want your dog to have a happy, good experience and actually be well taken care of, and you know, like we said earlier, you know, you're not just washing the dog and giving them a bit of a groom. You're inspecting their body. You're checking them for different types of things. You know, you're taking the time to be sure that they're having a happy experience. You know, they're then they're good. They they feel well loved and taken care of. Right, so. and that whole overall process is you know it's contributing to the the comfort of the dog. Yes. Your puppy wants to come in. He doesn't want to go home. He wants to stay with the groomer. That's always a good sign. <laughs> <laughs> and it's important. I'm no surprised. Way. Yeah, I'm surprised you just have two dogs. I have to <laughs> <laughs> well, I have. Uh, Many dogs during the day that are kind of like my, while they're here being groomed, they're almost like a foster foster dog. Yeah, foster dogs, I guess. So they it. come see me every week, so they're like my part time dogs. <laughs> Your part time dogs. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go see Auntie Billy. Oh, it's time to, to be with her. Oh, I love that. Um, so, uh, so you know, I've heard about cage drying. Mm-hmm. Uh, what is cage drying? Is it safe? No, it's not safe at all. Oh, it's not. Oh. Why not? What, cage, what's no? Cage drying is basically putting a dog in a cage and then putting a hot dryer blowing on them. Ew. And chances are the cages don't have ventilation, so the temperature in there really heats up. Really? Yeah. And to me, you could put a fan on the cage and it's not blowing hot air and that's perfectly fine. You know, mm-hmm. you want to just dry the dog off to get rid of some of the moisture. But Yeah, like a diffuser or something. Exactly. Uh-huh. And that, that helps a great deal, you know, but cage drying to me... It's, I consider it lazy. Uh-huh. Well, it is. I would never allow it in my salon whatsoever or anywhere I have ever worked. I've always been, taken a stand on it and basically said, I'm not working here if you're using that. Mm, wow. I don't want to be connected to that. So, okay. you know, it's, it, tragedy has happened yeah. with cage dryers in salons. over the. You see it on the news you know, over the years that's been going uh-huh. on, and it could have been avoided by just not using cage dryers. Wow. So. Wow. Well, that and you know that reminds me. I remember seeing something. I don't know what's happened to this the concept, but it was like a a laundromat for dogs. It's like you put your dog in this little box machine thing, and it was supposed to shampoo and then dry them off and do the whole thing. You know, they just have yeah. you seen those? I seen it a couple of years ago. It came out on market. It may have been from yeah. I don't remember where the company started, but I remember yeah. looking at the fellow who designed it and said. Are you kidding me? Are you insane? <laughs> Are you kidding me? <laughs> I just couldn't believe it, and they thought it was, uh, but, you know, maybe from that country, you know, dogs aren't regarded as yeah. they are here. You know, if, you know they're, they're part of our family, so I, yeah. mean, I would never, I don't even let my dogs out in the backyard by wow. themselves. Oh, uh-huh. they're with me. So <laughs> Yeah, I know. get it, yeah. <laughs> it's like putting your child in the in the washing machine, you know. <laughs> 
<laughs> don't do that. Yeah, or a young child in, you know, a, into a situation they don't, you know, know or recognize it's foreign, and, you know, you don't yeah. it's, Accidents yeah. happen, you know. Yes, they happen. do. Yes, they do. And And tragedy, you know, can strike at any moment. So right. we want to be careful and we want to be safe. So let's talk about bathing our dogs at home. And I have a confession to make. Okay. <laughs> Einstein and I take showers together. <laughs> So I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, uh, but uh, it works for us. So, uh, so what do you think about people bathing their dogs at home? And there's a lot of ways, you know, to put them outside and hit them with the, the, you know, the hose, or put them in the bathtub or in the sink. Or, or what do you th- talk about that for a minute? I think bathtubs and sinks are perfectly fine. Okay. Um, I think outside with a garden hose is usually one temperature. Ice yeah, cold. it's cold. And it's not very comfortable, and no. I. I have to admit, I had neighbors who said, my dog hates a bath. Oh, my God, we're out there outside by the garage washing her, and she will not let us wash her. I said, well, that's because the water is like 61 degrees. Exactly. You're freezing, you know? her, freezing her to death. You are freezing Good her to death, and she's mm-hmm. trying to get away from you because she's cold. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, and and yeah. especially early spring, you know, Lake Michigan water here, it's pretty cold. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, oh, my God. It's like an icicle. Yeah, exactly. Ooh. Bone chilling. Bone chilling is correct. Oh, you know, and that's, that just reminds me a point I want to make to everybody that's listening. Our animals do what makes sense to them from their viewpoint. They always have a reason for why they like or dislike something. Mm-hmm. So if they don't like something, they've got a very valid reason why not. And it's a really good idea to find out what that is, uh, you know. So, uh, so you think um, bath- bathing at home and tubs or sinks or whatever is fine. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. Proper temperature. Okay. Okay. So you don't th- see anything wrong with showering with your dog? Not at all. You know what? <laughs> the important thing <laughs> is just making sure you get all the soap out of the dog, all right. the shampoo. Right. And use, use pet products. Don't use human products on dogs. Oh, okay. A big misconception. Johnson Johnson makes baby shampoo. Yeah. Which is great, but it's designed to remove cradle cap on children, which means it's very drying. Oh. 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 And wow. I personally don't use it. I don't, I've used it on my myself, um, and realized my hair feels like a Brillo pad afterwards. Oh wow! <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know that about that. That yeah. makes a lot of sense. Uh, oh so, wow! And there's so many different dog products now that are safe for dogs that rinse out easy and are pH balanced. Mm-hmm. That um, okay. wouldn't be a problem. But I always recommend using conditioner after shampooing. Okay. Uh, what do you think of the combination, conditioner and shampoos? Um, there's a, I have a theory on that. Mm-hmm. Shampoo and conditioner do two different things. So I think when you have both of them together, you're kind of, you either have to be, it has to be so minimal in the conditioner because conditioner actually cuts shampoo. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The big, big, huge companies like, you know, Veda and stuff, they don't really make shampoos that are combinations. Some okay. of the other companies like that make Per Plus and stuff, they have a little bit of conditioner in them. They make a shampoo and conditioner in one. Um, end up having to use conditioner afterwards because there's not a lot, because they actually cancel each other out. Mm, okay. That yeah. makes sense. Yeah. 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 Okay. okay. Um, can I ask you a question, uh, Billy? How young um, uh, puppies can we start grooming? I mean, how young is too young? Well, I think probably I wouldn't. I would make sure my puppy has all their shots and inoculations before I take them, you know, into the public where there's other dogs, et cetera. So usually, like, between three and a half and four months old. Okay. Um, you could start at home right away. And I think it's important to get, you know, a puppy accustomed to the whole process, to the grooming and okay. bathing and drying. And I think it's, it does a wonder of good if once they're handled and, you know, and, and they're gently it's done gently. It's, a cross, it's, it's basically a crossroad for a puppy to be start grooming. Because you can either have a bad experience and that little puppy is going to be bad the rest of her life, his or her life, yeah. or you could, you know, start out positive and just coast into a great, you know, grooming relationship. Right. Which, right. you know, eventually, you know, I've seen puppies that have had bad experiences and it's taken a while, but I've usually been able to rehabilitate them or mm-hmm. calm them down. But it takes, sometimes it takes a while, you know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. No hot yeah. water too hot or the dryer blow drying their head or ears, mm-hmm. you know, with it's, it's, you just got to really, the whole thing, you just have to really, really think about it and think about putting yourself in the animal's shoes, per se, yeah. for, um, 
for a moment, you know, how forward it is, how foreign that a blow dryer is blowing in your eyeballs or your ears. So just, you know, be cautious and yeah, yeah. And think about okay. the doggy. Okay, that makes sense. How often should dogs be bathed? That would that's a personal preference. I, I like I said, I take care of I wash my dogs every week. Um Oh, okay. They're, they're both white with a little bit of black spots. Uh-huh. Speckled like Dalmatians. Uh-huh. Um, so living in the city they tend to get very dirty. And uh-huh. also I just like I said, I recently found out I have allergies, so it does help to keep, you know, any pollutants or allergens off their coat. Mhm. Okay. That makes sense. Yeah. That makes sense. Um and so um, let's talk about matting, the bane of our animals and groomers and owner, fur kid owners everywhere, mats. So um, let's talk about how, how do you deal with a mat? A mat, that would depend on how thick the mat is. Now, the, conception, the misconception of mats is people will call me and say, oh, my God, my dog, was I didn't brush her all weekend and she's solid mats. Mm-hmm. That's usually not the case. Okay. The dog has been solid mats for a long time. It's just... You're not brushing your dog properly. Okay. Mats aren't really caused from rolling around in the grass. A lot of dogs that have, so they say, hair, um, like poodles, Portuguese water dogs, cocker spaniels, shih tzu, schnauzers, any kind of doodle, um, Mm -hmm. tend to have, what happens is when they do shed the, the dead coat, instead of falling off on the floor like it would if you had a Dalmatian or a Husky or a German Shepherd. Mm-hmm. It actually gets stuck in the healthy living here, and it forms dreadlocks. Oh, and oh, oh, yeah. that's very interesting. Okay. Yeah. It's kind of like when, when people dread their hair, they just don't brush it. You know, anyone uh-huh. that you see dreadlocks in their hair, or a particular breed like a Commodore or a Pulley, mm-hmm. they have dreadlocks. You can't brush them, otherwise you take out the dead coat, and that's what forms the dreadlocks. Ah, uh, okay. So the mats form wow. tightly against the skin. And people will say to me, well, I washed them then and put conditioner to get the mats out. But actually that makes it worse because it's like drying a wool sweater. When you wash a wool sweater and it tightens up, mm-hmm. it even shrinks even more so the mats get even tighter and tighter. Okay, okay. Okay, so actually the mats have to come out first before you can shampoo or, or wash them. Correct. Uh-huh. It's okay. always good. And I like to section the hair. And if you start, it's all about habit. If you start... Um, at a young age, or if you can't start at a young age, start at a daily basis using a brush on a dog for three minutes. Mm-hmm. Get them into the habit, reward them with treats. Um, masks can be taken out if they're not so bad where they're like wilted to the skin. Mm-hmm. You can actually section the hair and brush little sections at a time. Mm, okay. And it does help. Um, and, you know, people come and they bring their dogs to be groomed and they're really mad at, you know, you quote someone a price for a haircut. It's kind of like going to the, your your um, hairstylist and saying, I want to get a haircut, what do you charge? But you go there and your hair is full of dreadlocks and they have to do the extra work and, mm-hmm. you know, brush the mat start, which is not usually the case with people here because we run a brush through our hair several times a day, so we don't have that problem. But with dogs, you come into the salon and you have to spend an hour brushing out the dog, yeah. you know, be prepared to pay for that. Okay. But if that the dog is really matted, I typically like to start them over fresh because I don't like to torture the animals. It's a bad experience for oh, them. Oh, God, no. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Oof, okay. <laughs> so are there things that we could do to just avoid them in the first place, and that would be like just um, daily brushing? Daily brushing. That down. would do it? Okay. A couple times a week, really good down, brushing down to the skin and getting a metal comb and okay. combing after you brush. Uh, the reason I say metal, plastic puts a lot of static in the hair. Oh, and it oh, tends okay. to knot up even more. Also, people like to let their dogs swim, like their big poodles and their doodles. And mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Dogs get wet and they're not brushed out. They get matted real fast. Oh, <laughs> wow. Okay, okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, wet equal mat. <laughs> Especially if it's not brushed or dried properly. If not brushed and dried properly. Thank you. Oh, that's You're a welcome. good point. Very good point. Okay, so... Um, so so did, um, how can someone help their dog get over a nail trimming phobia? I get asked this one a lot. That's very interesting. And I, I um, it just takes time and just a lot of patience. Okay. And many treats in some cases. Ah, jackpots <laughs> and jackpots of treats. Yes. Yeah. I mean, okay. it, it, can, it can be done. Um, mm. But I've had dogs that have taken well over a year. Wow. And then now you look back and you say, oh, my God, I don't even need a muscle anymore. Mhm. You know. mm-hmm. Yeah. I had yeah. A, an interesting story. Um, 
I had a little dog that was from the shelter I started grooming about 10 years ago. He was nine months old. Mm-hmm. And um, from the time he came in, I had to put a muzzle on him. Mm-hmm. With the muzzle, he was a little angel. He let me do anything without a fuss. I could mm-hmm. take the muzzle off in the tub and wash his little face and quietly, you know, and gently rinse his face and never have a problem. Mm-hmm. Cut his nails, you know, did what I had to do. Perfect angel. Second he came in, though, I, the owners would have to put the muzzle on, and he was great. Mm-hmm. Never a problem. Mm-hmm. I remember one incident. He went to um, their vet, and their vet started grooming at the time. Mm-hmm. And he missed an appointment once. Probably This is probably about eight years ago. Mm-hmm. And when he came back in for the next appointment, I could not even get near him. He was so traumatized, and he just defecated on the floor and Ooh. did double flips and... I couldn't touch him. We had to send him home. And I didn't realize at the time she had taken him somewhere else. Wow. Until she called me and she said, I realized that, um, you know, I don't think anyone was ever mean to my dog, but I just don't think they handled the dogs the way you do. And I think they probably overreacted when my husband took the dog in and he tried snapping at him. And they just, instead of saying, come on, come with me, they just pulled the dog or whatever the case. But needless to say, it took about two years for me to get back to where I was before with him. Mm. Now he's okay with Muslim. He only lets me touch him. Mm-hmm. Nobody else can go near him. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, you know, it's uh, trust is earned. It is. You know, uh, so you've earned his trust, yeah. and others have not. They have abused it. Yeah. So that makes a lot of sense. And now she real, you know, the owner realizes that she looked at me and said, "I promise you, I will never take my dog anywhere else. I promise <laughs> you." <laughs> yeah, they're a believer now. Yeah, it's amazing, and you know that that happens too often. It, it, people, you know, we don't pay enough attention, or we just, you know, or something unforeseen happens. Uh, we don't take as good a care uh, of our animals, and then, and then we suffer the consequence. You know, in this case, with this little guy, um, you know, it was a two-year process of getting him back to be a happy camper with you. You know, right. so um, it makes a lot of sense. It, it, you know, after something bad happens, is when. You know, it's, they say hindsight is a great teacher. Well, it's also a great kick in the butt, right. you know, kind of, oh, cr- crap, why did I do that, you know, <laughs> kind of teacher, too. So that makes sense. And, wow. you know, it's, it's again, it's, you know, working with animals, we, it's, it's putting yourself out there. You have to just mm-hmm. be open. You have to be open. You have to put yourself in there, in the situation where the animal's in. Yeah. I, I, I'll tell you a real quick story. I was doing a seminar in a different state, and I was at a facility that did boarding and grooming. And, uh-huh. um, and I remember walking through the grooming room to leave to go get lunch. Yeah. And I saw this girl, this young girl who was grooming, uh, blow drying a Labrador puppy. Oh. And the puppy had to be about four months old. And this little the little guy was just trembling like there were. He was like a motorboat, just. Mm-hmm. And, you know, she wasn't being mean to him, per se. She was just blow-drying his head and not talking to him. Mm. And I can remember walking up to the little puppy. I felt so bad. I looked at him and said, oh, my God, my heart's sinking here. There's no need for this. Mm -hmm. Walked up to him while she was drying him, cupped his little ears, gave him a kiss on the forehead and said, it's okay, and just rubbed his little head and talked to him and smiled. And he literally started wagging his tail and perked up. Uh And I said, he's afraid of the dryer. You need to talk to him. Yes. To the woman. And she just looked at me, and then he was fine. Mm-hmm. Then she started petting him, and I'm like, okay, she wasn't mean to him. She just didn't make the connection that, no. you know, he has feelings too. <sighs> yes, exactly. You know, I think uh, I think a lot of times people just get in the mode of doing the job, and, and they it. forget to connect with exactly. their client, which is the animal on the table. Right. So good. Yeah. If our animal, If our dogs could fill out a survey... You know, uh, or <laughs> a satisfaction <laughs> survey. They could give it a one paw up or a two paw up or, a, you know, or a tail tail down, you know, or something. Mm-hmm. Um, that would really be helpful, wouldn't it? It sure would. Yes, it would. <laughs> <laughs> so um, speaking of labs, um, so do dogs that actually don't really need haircuts, um, do they still need to be groomed professionally? Um not necessarily. I mean, you don't have to okay. cut them, of course. But I think it's good once in a while to really get in there and get out a lot of the dead coat and wash mm. them. Oh, oh yeah, okay, okay. It, use the blow dryer and blow it out. Um, you can do a lot of it at home, actually, or you can take it to, like, your self-service where you can go in and do it yourself. Okay. Um, in my book, 
happy dog. We talk about that very oh. often. Okay, okay. You know, doing stuff at home or taking them to, you know, make it easier for you. And, you know, sometimes it's, you know, it can be a little costly and you can save some money and do it in between. And okay. It's always very helpful. Okay, okay. Um, so um, the the story that I told you earlier about my dog and his ears, mm-hmm. um, so can you give us some tips about ears? I mean, is that a common problem with dogs, or is it was is this just an isolated incident? Well, I'll tell you. Um, dogs like, dogs that have hair, per se, yeah, he, schnauzers, shih tzus, yeah. porties, yeah, he's, poodles, he's a hairy. They, have, they have the hairy ear canals. Mm-hmm. Where if you have a Labrador or a German Shepherd, you don't. There's no hair growing in the canal, so that's the benefit of having a dog that's a wash and wear. I call the dogs that don't need haircuts wash and wear. <laughs> wash and wear. <laughs> I love wash that. them and they're done. They're done. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but the ear here is a tough, tough um, part of cleaning okay. because it can't really be cut out. You actually have to pull it out, um, and that would depend. You know, you can go through. A little bit of ear powder on your fingers and pull just tiny little strands out at a time. And sometimes the hair is so packed in there mm-hmm. that you, know, you may have to take them to the vet to have it removed. And with that, there's always, you know, there's always room for irritation mm-hmm. because it's being pulled out. You can't really put a, a tool down inside the ear to cut it. You have to mm-hmm. literally pull it out. Okay. And it depends on how it's done, how gently it's done. Now, my Portuguese water dog, Zeke, he has allergies to food. And when he's at daycare, um, even though how strict I am about not letting him eat certain treats, mm-hmm. he comes back three days later, his ears flare up. Mm-hmm. Yes. I'm sure he's gotten into treats or something else. Right. Um, and that's a lot of cause. Not all the cause, but allergies have, play a big part in, you know, ear infections. But he never has a problem until I pluck his ears. When I do mm-hmm. pluck his ears, I don't do it all the time. Mm-hmm. It seems to flare his ears up. Yes seems to aggravate and aspirate the problem even more. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. So, um, but, but what I do is I, I make sure all my utensils are clean. I not only barbicide my hemostats, um, but I also autoclave everything. So, I mean, okay. and if you're going to clean ears at home or you're going to pluck your dog's ear here, make sure you sanitize everything and have two pairs of hemostats. Use one per ear. Don't use the same one in each ear. Mm, because if okay. there's an ear infection in one ear, it can transfer to another. Okay. Okay, and sometimes it can stay isolated in one ear, and it's totally fine. So. Okay, okay. okay. Um, I have to. I want to tell you a tip, okay. a tip that I learned um, after this happened to Einstein, mm-hmm. which was actually only about five months ago, <clears throat> five six months ago, um, and was the primary reason that I decided to invest in my own set of clippers and to try to learn how to groom them myself. <laughs> okay. So. Um, so Whatever you know, so um, but I, yeah, well you know it's it's okay. Um, I you know, I'm I'm pretty pretty clever about it, and I need a lot more practice, and I need some training. But you know what, it, it's okay. He looks fine, and I'm sure and he's in an absolute loving environment. So he totally loves it. He is very comfortable, and we do really good together. So oh, good. it's it's a bonding experience, you know, and a, and a nice training opportunity too for both of us. Um, so um, anyway, what I was going to tell you is I had talked to. Dr. Arthur Young, who I have also interviewed on the podcast show, he's a oh, uh, he's a phenomenal vet. I uh, started practicing in the early, in the fifties, um, and he has he's uh, as an alternative vet. He's had vet clinics all over. He's he's just an amazing man. And uh, I, in fact, after I interviewed him, um, I decided to consult him uh, for Einstein. And uh, he had had Einstein's had chronic ear, ear problems, infections since he was little, and uh, we've been working with that, and you know we'd get it better, and then it would get worse, get it better, get it worse, and then this happened. Anyway, so I, ta- I was talking to Dr. Young about about this, and he told me that if I got um, some a hair removal cream. Mm-hmm. And if I just put that in the ears and left it in there for you know the, the couple of minutes or however long it is, um, and then just rinsed it out, that there was really no need to pluck it out. Um, and that's what we've been doing. We've been giving okay. it a try, and I have to tell you, it works brilliantly well. Um, that's wonderful. The the infections are gone. Um, he's fine having his ears you know handled, um, and there's no plucking. Which you know you know how it hurts to have ear have um, hair plucked out of your body. 
um, ow. <laughs> oh, my God, that has to just be excruciating, especially out of your sensitive ears. Yeah. Um, but anyway, I just wanted to give you that tip. Um, mm-hmm. I don't know if you've done that before or thought about it. Um, I know people who have actually tried it, which yeah. Um, some have wonderful luck, but others had, you know, the dog had sensitive skin and it was a little yeah. but, but quite yeah. a few actually have totally alleviated any kind of, like, hair problem at all, which yeah. is great. It is a great tip to know if, if your dog is okay with it, and yeah. I'm delighted to say that so far Einstein hasn't shown any okay. you know, sensitivity to what I'm using. But then again, I'm not doing it, you know, more than about once a month or so. Okay, so, yeah, um, no, that's but, great. So anyway, just delighted to share that tip. Anyway, so so Billy, let's talk about your website and your book, um, so people can learn how to get more. Because I know your book it doesn't just talk about grooming. Um, you talk about traveling, you talk about, um, I mean, you just have ama- amazing stuff, safety and emergency preparedness, pet nutrition, um, play. You've got some stuff in here by celebrity dogs. You, you've yeah. got all kinds of stuff in your wonderful book. It's fun. It's, you know, we happy dog, caring for your dog's body, mind, and spirit. Yes. So it's, um, it's although I'm a groomer and, you know, it's not just about grooming. It's my experience over, the, you know, the last Almost, almost three decades. Oh boy, I'm really dating myself here. <laughs> <laughs> I started when I was two. No, just kidding. <laughs> nah. uh, yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. There's, there's so much. There's finding, you know, helping you find um, a Fido staff, which people you want to, you know, surround your dog with, who help you with your dog, dog mm. walkers, just so many just different. Um, so much different information and just good stuff, good resources, and you know, just I had a really great time. It took about a little over two years to write the book, but boy, was it fun! It was really, really fun. Many, many nights up till three o'clock in the morning, writing, yes. and writing, yeah. and writing. But you know, so rewarding. I you know love this, and I would never think of doing anything else, even with my allergies. Yeah, <laughs> I, will, I will keep this under control because this is my this is definitely my calling in life. This is your passion. This yeah. is your love. Sure. And you're doing a brilliant job of it. So well, thank, thank you, you so much for bringing your wisdom and your experience and your love and your compassion, you know, and your insight and your sensitivity. And I'm just so delighted, you know, that you're doing what you do. Um, and for everyone who's listening, let's give them your website, which is billyrafferty.com. Mm-hmm. Did I say that right? You sure did. Okay. Let's uh, let's spell it. So, yeah. Billy. Um. Go ahead, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, okay, no, you, no, 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 you. Uh, Billy is B-I-L-L-Y, Rafferty, R-A-F-F-E-R-T-Y.com. The dog, uh, the, I'm sorry, the dog. The book is Happy Dog, Caring for Your Dog's Body, Mind, and Spirit. And your Doggy Do's Pet Styling Salon is in Chicago. Yes. And uh, if anyone wants to get on your list, they better call now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then make an alternate plan for the next two years. So there you go. <laughs> if you're planning on a puppy, call me now. No, yeah, planning on a puppy any time in the next three years. I give, uh, it's like, uh, you know, uh, for people and their children, you know, finding the right school for them to go to before they're even born. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. <laughs> anyway, so so again, it's BillyRafferty.com. The book is Happy Dog, Caring for Your Dog's Body, Mind, and Spirit. Billy, is there anything you want to leave us with today before we say adieu? Um, I just, I think, Al, I think you're wonderful. Uh, you're oh. amazing. Thank you <laughs> Thank so you. much for having me oh, you're welcome. on your show. And it's been a real pleasure. Yeah. Um, I just hope that my mission, my mission in life is to, Help us help our dogs and make them more comfortable, and you know they're they're loving little creatures, loving little souls here in this world, uh, yes. uh, amongst a bunch of aliens, meaning uh-huh. people. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we need to take care of them and love them and make them as happy as we possibly can. Yes, that's, that's my goal, and that's you know what inspired me to do um, to write Happy Dog. It's I love that. that. Yeah, that makes so much sense. Oh, thank you. Ah, thank you. Thank you. I do have a funny dog. story I'd like to share with you about. Oh, good. I would love funny. to hear a funny story. Okay, go ahead. Um, back in 1994, December, right after Christmas, I remember I got a call from a couple calls during the day, and then finally someone called, and I picked up the phone, and they said, "Hi, is Billy Rafferty in, please?" Mm-hmm. And I'm like, it was 6:30 at night, and 
dog hair flying everywhere. It was a busy day. And um, I said, this is Billy. Can I help you? And she goes, yes, Billy, this is Oprah Winfrey. And I would like to make an appointment for my dog, Solomon, my new puppy, to come in and see you. I was highly recommended to you by several people, and my veterinarian sent me to you. And, and of course, I, you know, was like, okay, this is really Oprah, please. <laughs> and then I'm like, okay. And I'm like, okay, let me grab my book. Mm-hmm. Um, and then talking to her, she goes, Billy, have you ever watched my show? And I mm-hmm. realized at that point it was really Oprah. And I have to tell you, my jaw dropped. (laughs) I had to scrape it off the ground before I could finish the conversation with her. Uh Needless to say, I did take her dog that evening later after work and groomed Solomon. And, you know, I I started grooming her dog then and, you know, have been grooming him ever since. Oh, I love that. She's a lovely lady. Lovely, lovely, lovely lady. I'm glad to hear you say that. She loves her doggies. Yes. Yes, she does. Yes, she does. I love that about Oprah. As much as I love everything else that she does, uh, I love that she's a fellow dog lover. She yeah. really is. So how did, you, how did your book get featured on Oprah.com? Was it just because she loved your work and, and saw your book and went, oh, my God, I'm going to, you know, Yeah, put it, put, it, put it on, you know, and then you can link, there's some links to her website that show the book and excerpts from the book, which are really nice, and, of course, my website and stuff. Mm-hmm. Are on, um, yeah, but that's pretty much, they did an interview with me. Mm-hmm. And then put some stuff on her website, which is really nice. Oh, I love that. Great. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you very That's much. Awesome. Oh, I love it. Thanks for telling us that. That's a wonderful story. Oh, you're welcome. My pleasure. Okay. Really. All right. Okay, everybody. So go to BillyRafferty.com. Um, or if you want to get on his master list and waiting list, uh, <laughs> it's Doggy Doos, D O O Z, Pet Styling in Chicago, Illinois. So, And that's in the U.S. for all of you Outlanders. <laughs> <laughs> um, thank you for having me, and hello, everyone, and thank you for listening. <laughs> yes, okay. All right, so we'll talk to you later, and uh, please keep in touch. I sure okay. will. Thanks for listening to the show. For more information or to listen to other podcasts, go to valheart.com forward slash blog. And if you're someone who values a non-invasive, holistic solution to resolving problems with your dogs, cats, and horses, and you want better behaved, healthier, and happier animals, just go to my website at valheart.com to apply for a complimentary happy animal assessment session. And be sure and remember to look for my CDs on iTunes. Learning how to talk with animals is fun and will change your life. So while you're there at my site, get my free Quick Start Animal Talk course and check out the world's first complete animal communication made easy system. May the love of animals bless you, teach you, inspire you, heal you, and reconnect you to the circle of life.